Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on the Viofo A119. So this one's a little late of a review because it did come out last summer and since then there actually have been several improvements. So this one actually is a little bit different than the ones that were released last summer and I'll try to cover the differences. And on top of that, there is actually an A119S which uses a Sony CMOS sensor. So I don't have that right now so I might do a future comparison but for now it's just the regular A119. So this is the su successor to the A118. What's great about this is it has 1080p 60 frames per second or up to 1440p at 30 frames per second. So that's obviously a upgrade in the frame rate. And besides the frame rate it actually does have a really high bit rate. Both the 1080p 60 and 1440p are going to be about 20 megabits per second. You can see here it has a capacitor instead of a battery, 160 degree angle lens. It does use the Novatech NT96660 chipset with the Omnivision QV4689 sensor. So it's very similar to the A118's. Basically, it really is a true successor. So here we got a quick start guide, which is pretty good. It does actually have quite a lot of details in here. So included with it is the power cord, which is actually a USB adapter with a separate USB cable, and it does use mini USB. So it does have two ports also, so you can charge a cell phone while powering the camera. There you can see the mini USB. Now surprisingly this little adapter isn't as bad of quality as I would have expected. A lot of times they, a lot of these under $100 cameras come with really cheap ones, but it feels pretty sturdy, so I like that. And it does actually have a little blue light on the top. So then we also have another USB cable for data transfer. Here's the first mounting plate option, which is just a piece of plastic, just like the A118, and it is very, very tight. Some people might not like how tight it is, but it's definitely not going to fall off in your car any time soon. It's really, really tight. Even after using it, or taking it on and off a dozen or so times, it's still really tight. Once it's actually stuck on the window, it's a lot easier. So here's the second mounting option. You can see it's thicker because it actually has the GPS in it. There you can see the four metal pins which will connect to the camera when you install it. And also it has another power port so if you want you can plug the power cord into the GPS unit which you actually need to do if you want to use the GPS. We got some string and extra adhesive. Got some cable clips. Overall, I think the design looks like a natural improvement. One really cool feature that some people might find useful is the lens actually rotates left or right. It doesn't have much varying degrees, but the option's there, so it's pretty cool. It is noticeably bigger than the A118, but the buttons are the same. You got a power, menu, record, mic, and emergency record button, which will lock a file. Here you can see the mini USB power, audio video out. Again, we got the power on the top too if you use the GPS one. That actually is nice because it will keep the cord out of the way and you can have it go straight up into the headboard instead of off to the side. Here we got a reset switch and the micro SD card port which supports up to 64 gigabytes. So overall, I really like this design. Feels very sturdy. Viofo has added a couple new features that I really like. For example, when you put the memory card in, it actually asks you to format it each time. And since a lot of people probably don't format it all the time, it's a nice way to get people to actually do it every time. And if there is any issue with the memory card, or if it needs to be formatted, it'll actually beep. 
So I really like the fact that it has these audio alerts because other cameras you might not even notice there's an error and this one's going to actually warn you and tell you that you got to do something. So I did want to try to quickly go through the menu to show you guys what's in the menu. Some things have changed since last summer. Overall the menu system's the same though when you're you got to stop the recording and then record and mic is up and down. And there you can see the different resolutions and frame rates. Loop recording goes from one minute to ten minutes, which is higher than most cameras, but if you want longer clips, you have the option. You can change the exposure. We got wide dynamic range, a time lapse record mode. If you want to switch to this mode, you can do a makeshift parking mode in a way. Now with the motion sensing, it actually says in the manual not to use it while driving. So some people do and they claim it works fine, but you know the manufacturer doesn't suggest it, so I'm not going to personally suggest it, but the motion detection's there and it actually works decently. There's no big delay in the motion detection. We got G-Shock sensitivity of course, lane departure warning system, and front collision warning system. Personally I think it's pointless. I leave those off because all it does is beep if you start to drift or get too close to a car. We got a time stamp, GPS stamp. At launch you couldn't actually turn the speed or GPS info off and since then they've updated the firmware so you can uh, change those so that's very helpful. The screen saver is how long the screen will stay on because you don't really want the bright screen blinding you at night. The LED option is for the red blinking record light, which is going to be on the record button. Then we got some other standard settings like time zone, time, language, and like a lot of other Chinese cameras, this one does have quite a few languages. Now for frequency, you do want to keep that on 60 Hz for North American users. Format warning will warn you after a certain number of days to format your card. Again, I really like that feature. Can add some of your own custom information to the screen, of course. And we got my version. This is the version I had when I recorded this video. And of course, if you wanted to, you could view your video files on the camera, but I'm not going to cover that. I wanted to do a quick comparison of the A118 to the A119. You can see the 119 is quite a bit thinner, but it is bigger, or at least in footprint size. From the front, it might look about the same, but it's definitely got a bigger footprint. I think I actually like the A118 design a little better, but I do like how the A119 is flat. Not a fan of the bright white text on the buttons, so if any other third party manufacturers make all black ones, I would prefer that. So now when it comes to video, this YouTube video is only going to have 1080p. Down in the description I will provide some links to some raw files of 1080p 60 and 1440p 30. Overall I'm very satisfied and impressed with the A119 quality. I feel like these hundred dollar or less cameras have been getting very great the last six months or so. It's really gonna start pushing some of the higher-end camera companies to get their prices down or offer something else in addition to good video quality or special features because like I said some of these cameras like this one that's only a hundred dollars is starting to have really good quality video and at a very cheap price so again like I mentioned before it does have 20 megabits per second for the 1080p 60 or 1440p 30 and that's a very high bitrate so you are really gonna want to use a 64 gigabyte memory card because with that high bit rate you're not going to get much uh, recording on a 32 gigabyte card or less so definitely go for the 64 gigabyte card. 
At first I thought the camera was overexposing the picture quite a lot because some of these license plates were very hard to read, like right now, but pretty positive that's just my truck because my truck is pretty tall so it's shining light directly at their license plate. Watching other people's videos it doesn't seem nearly as big of an issue or doesn't seem like an issue at all for some people, although I have heard some people say that it was overexposed. I have had times like this clip here where it seems like the headlights are just really blooming a lot and I think this is more of an environmental issue. I think due to the weather it makes it look a lot worse than it is because when you're driving around in the city on a very clear day you don't really have this issue. So I'm very satisfied with the video quality overall especially like I said for a hundred dollar camera. It did seem like the 1080p 60 footage had better night quality than the 1440p and that might be why they're releasing the A119S with a Sony XMOS CMOS sensor because that supposedly does better night quality. I haven't confirmed that myself but that's the idea at least. So even if you end up with this camera I would check it out yourself and see what you think because it did seem like the night quality on all my clips was slightly better on the 1080p 60. But again, I recommend you try it for yourself and see with your own eyes and make up your own decision which one you think is better because the 1440p I think is going to be better during the day so there's trade-offs anyways. So overall I really recommend this camera. I already had it on my top 5, top 6 stash camera list that I just posted recently. Now this was provided to me for review by blackboxmycar.com so I'd like to thank them for sending it out for a review and I'll, of course I'll provide links down below to where you can purchase this from them and I do want to point out you know a lot of people have been wanting to use this for a parking mode and like I mentioned earlier the manual suggests you don't leave the motion detection on while driving because they claim it might not actually record always while you're driving due to some sort of error but, you know, you, you can do it at your own risk. If you do do it, I would recommend at least a PowerMagic Pro, which lets you set a timer to make sure it turns off, you know, after 12 hours or 24 hours. So it's not just constantly running 24 hours a day. And, you know, you any computer or electronic, you want to turn off once in a while anyway. So there's also the Vico Power Plus, which is even better than the Power Magic Pro, but it does cost more. It does that one actually has a temperature cutoff too. So I'll provide links to both of those down below or just a really cheap hard wiring kit if you don't care about hooking it up for parking mode at all. There is also a CPL circular polarizing lens filter for this camera which I do not have, I was not able to test. So if you're interested in that, what it does is if you don't know, it reduces the glare in your windshield. So if you're interested in that, I'll provide a link down below for that too. Anyways, that pretty much covers my review of the A119. Like I said, I love it. I think it's my go-to budget camera now. Now, if, you know, if $100 is still too much for you, I still recommend the A118C. But if you can, $100 is in your budget, definitely go for this one. So as usual, thanks for watching, drive safe, and I'll see you next time.